Bandeham Shigura Shiata Bodagamlam Shigurun Vaishnavam Sha Shirupam Sagrajatam Saganaraganatam Bitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Sabadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shiradha Krishna Paran Sahagana Lalita Shivishikam Vitam Sha Oma Gyana Timaranda Shahagana Jana Shalakaya Chakshurun Milita Mina Tasma Shigurvena Ma Gurva Bistam Supurkam Gurganara Sisha Samboshitam Chintya Chintya Samastaveda Nipanam Shirupa Patanugam Govinda Abidam Ujwalam Varatanum Bhaktian Vidam Sundaram Mande Vishwa Gurunsha Divyat Bhagavat Prem No Ibijapradam Devum Divyatanum Suchanda Varanam Balar Kachelanshitam Sandra Nanda Puram Sadekavaranam Vairagya Vidyam Bunim Sri Siddhanta Nidim Subhakti Lasitam Saraswatanam Baram Banditam Shubadam Madeka Sharanam Nyashi Swarashi Dharam Vansha Kopatarubyas Chakripa Sindhu Bhyavicha Patita Nam Pavani Bhyo Vaishnava Bhyo Namonama Namo Mahabharanyaya Krishna Prema Pradayate Krishnaya Krishna Chaitanya Namane Gaurati Vishenama So we're reading from the Sri Sikshastakam, the eight original verses composed by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is with the Commentary of Srila Bhakti Rakak Sridhar Dev Goswami Maharaj's translation of the verses and commentary. So we're on the eighth verse. This is called Union and Separation. Aslishava Pararatam Pinashtumam Adarshanam Marmahatam Karotuva Yatatatava Vidadratu Lampato Matprananatas Tusa Eva Napara Aslishava pararatam pinastumam hadarshanam marmahatam karotuva yatatata va vidadatu lampato matprananatas tusa eva napara. Krishna may embrace me in love or trample me under his feet. He may break my heart by hiding himself from me. Like that debate. Let that debauchee do whatever he likes, but he will always be the only Lord of my life. Krishna may embrace me in love or trample me under his feet. He may break my heart by hiding himself from me. Let that debauchee do whatever he likes, but he will always be the only Lord of my life. Illumination. This is the greatest medicine for the devotees. We have come to measure the immeasurable, but we must always embrace this principle. In attempting to connect ourselves with the infinite Lord of love and beauty, we must remember that he is the infinite. He is only one to us, but he has many devotees like us to deal with. He may embrace us with much affection and adoration, but we must be prepared for the opposite. We may stick to his feet, but he may cruelly trample us. We have caught hold of his holy feet with great hope, With our whole heart, still we may find that he tramples us and does not care for all our attempts and affection. We may be giving our best and find that our offering is being hatefully dishonored. He may embrace us, but at the same time, we must be prepared that his dealings may be extremely cruel. He may trample all our offerings beneath his feet. We must be prepared for both his adoration and his hateful negligence. We should, we should be prepared for any adverse circumstances. Krishna may be indifferent. He may not care. And when he is punishing us, he is near. But when he is indifferent, it is more intolerable than punishment. The devotee thinks, Krishna is ignoring me, neglecting me so much that he does not like to keep any connection with me. Doesn't he know me? Am I a foreigner unknown to him? We, am, we may accept punishment as a boon but indifference is even more heart-rending. The pain of separation felt by a devotee may even go a step higher. Krishna may affectionately embrace another right before our eyes, in front of our face, without caring even a little for us. 
we may think this is my claim, my right, but that may be given to another right in front of our face. This will be a source of increasing trouble to us. This is the law of affection. The law of love cannot tolerate indifference. It is too much to tolerate, but we must be prepared for that. We must be prepared from the beginning that this is the meaning of Krishna Prema, divine love for Krishna, because he is an autocrat. He is love. Divine love means mercy and not justice. There is no law there, and we have selected divine love to be our highest fortune. So we must be prepared to be treated without justice. There is no justice in divine love. It is free. It may flow anywhere and everywhere. This is the very nature of divine love, so we can't make any claim. We have no rights. This is the nature of the highest thing, and is extremely rare. But unhesitating adherence to that principle is required from our side. It is real love, and you must be prepared for that. In all adverse circumstances, this is the real nature of Krishna Prema, tied to live. If you, can't, if you can accommodate all these different stages, good or bad, then you can enter this exalted plane. So this is the eighth verse of the Sakshastika, and it is a very high verse, and it is Mahaprabhu speaking in the, in the words of Srimati Radharani. That's why it says, uh, let that debauchee do whatever he likes, but he will always be the only Lord in my life. So here Srila Srinamars is speaking of this as uh, very, a very exalted stage of prema, what Srimati Radharani is experiencing. And here we find that previously Mahap Mahaprabhu said, Yugayitam nime shena chakshusha prabhishayitam shunyayitam jagat sarvam govinda virahename. Then I'm feeling one separation from Krishna to be like an eternity, to be unimaginable amount of time. That is extreme of separation. And we heard of that in terminology that yugayitam nime shena, that I'm considering one moment to be like of separation from Krishna to be like a yuga. So some definitions of, of yuga may be one standard definition is 12 years or more. So I'm feeling one moment of separation to be from Krishna to be like 12 years or more. Then another, of course, is we, we know of the chatur yuga, the four yugas. So like, so that period of time may be hundreds of thousands of years. But in, in the case of, of the translation that uh, Srila Sh Sridhar presents, it defines this a yuga as being like an eternity. Even just a moment of separation from Krishna seems like an eternity. So we're on another plane of consciousness when, when we understand this is beyond the principle of, um, of just like um, hair standing on end and um, tears flowing from the eyes. That is, that, is, that is previously mentioned, that Mahaprabhu is desiring that stage, but then having attained that, there's principles of going beyond. And one of the principles was the previous verse of great separation from Krishna. Now here is something even more you know, on, a, on an even higher consideration, because we can take these to be the words of Srimati Radharani. Krishna may embrace me in love or trample me under his feet. He may break my heart by hiding himself from me. Let that debauchee do whatever he likes, but he will always be the only Lord of my life. And Krishna, even Srimati Radharani is expressing how even one must be prepared that Krishna will show indifference to one that Krishna will act in a way that is, that is causing one's heart to feel strong emotions. Therefore, the, the title of this uh, commentary on the eighth verse is Union and Separation. So to be treated with indifference, to, be, uh, to be, have Krishna to be indifferent, to have Krishna show favor to another and, and even Srimati Radharani 
Shimati Radharani has seen that sometimes Krishna will show himself to be indifferent to her or even going with another person. So all this is, is very intense. Then this part is called love is above law. Justice is within law. Mercy is above law. Prema, divine love, is also above law. But it has its own law. Another verse whose meaning runs parallel to this one is given by Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada. Virachayam mai dandam dina bandhu dayam va gatir ihana bhavata kachid anyam mamasti nipatatu shata kotir nirbaram va navambas tad apikila payoda stuyate chatakena. There's a kind of small bird named Chatak that only drinks rainwater. It never drinks any water from the earth, whether it is from a, fount a river, fountain, or lake. Its very nature is that with its mouth upward, it hankers after rainwater. Srila Rupa Goswami gives this example to show how a devotee should always be waiting in expe expectation of the rainwater of Krishna love and no other love. So the chatak is bird is a, some way you say it's a, a myth, mythical bird, but it's a bird that won't drink water from this earth. It's only waiting for rainwater, and when it begins to rain, then it drinks. Otherwise not. The devotee prays to the Lord, you are the friend of the fallen, so I have some hope. You may grant your grace or severely punish me in either case. I have no other alternative but to wholly surrender to your lotus feet. Our attitude of surrender should be just like that of the chuttak bird, which always has his eyes fixed upward praying for rainwater. Rainwater may come profusely, not only enough to fill up its small belly, but enough to drown this whole body. Thunder may come from above, a bolt from the blue may come and finish his small body and send him to the non-existent quarter. But still, the nature of that bird is to pray exclusively for rainwater. He won't take water from any other place under any circumstance. Our attitude toward Krishna should be like that. Whether or not he extends his gracious hand towards us, it is our duty to surrender unto him. In this connection, one verse comes to my memory. When Sri Krishna met Srimati Radharani and the gopis in Kurukshetra, after a long separation of perhaps a hundred years, he felt that he had committed a great crime by separating himself from them. Approaching near the gopis, especially Srimati Radharani, and remembering their qualities of love and surrender, he felt like the greatest criminal, so much so that he bent down to touch the lotus feet of Radharani. One poet has represented the scene in this way, and that poem has been collected by Rupa Goswami in his Padyavali. Krishna was at that time the paramount king of India, but when he came in connection with the gopis and the atmosphere of Vrindavan, he felt like a criminal and bending down, he was just about to touch the lotus feet of Radharani. When Radharani, drawing back, remarked, what are you doing? Why are you coming to touch my feet? This is astounding. Have you lost your mind? And this is called, I'm the real criminal. You are the master of everything. No explanation can be demanded of you. You are Swami. You are my husband and master, and I am your maidservant. It may be felt for some time you were engaged in some other quarter, but what's the harm in that? What is the fault in you for that? That does not matter for that that does not matter for that right is given to you by scripture and society. There is no crime, no sin on your part. You have done nothing wrong. You have done nothing wrong wrong. I am the real criminal. The meanness is with me. The defect is wholly with me. You are not responsible for our separation. So why you why do you consider that you are faulty or that you have committed some wrong? The positive proof that I am the real criminal is that I sustained my life. I did not die from the pangs of your separation. I'm showing my face to the world, but I am not faithful to you. I could not approach the standard of faith 
which I should have maintained for your love, so I am the criminal, not you. It has been written in the scriptures by the saints that the wife should be thankful and exclusively devoted to the husband. This has been ordained in the scriptures. A woman should be devoted exclusively to her husband, her Lord. So in this meeting, I should fall at your feet and beg for your pardon, for your forgiveness, for your forgiveness, that I have really no love for you. So this is Shemati Radharani speaking. I'm maintaining this body and showing my face to society. I'm not a proper partner for you, so please forgive me. You are begging my forgiveness? This is just the opposite of how things should be. What is this? Please don't do this. So Mahaprabhu himself, he reflects these feelings and he talks like that. And he says, I have no love for Krishna. Uh, and, and someone may say, but you're always shedding tears and there is like a, a lake of tears at, near your feet. So many tears are flowing from your eyes. Then, Ma, then Mahaprabhu was saying, no, this is just to cheat the innocent public, to make some show. Then, they, then Ma, Mahaprabhu, expressing the mood of Radharani, says, the real proof that I have no love is I'm maintaining my fly-like existence out of habit, bathing, eating, doing all those things just out of habit. But the proof that I don't have any real love is that if I had real love, I would have died from separation a long time ago. So these words of Mahaprabhu, they, they're, they're expressed here. They, he is showing the, the, the words of Radharani when Krishna wanted to touch her feet for the offenses that he had committed. So... You are, you are begging my forgiveness? This is just the opposite of how things should be. What is this? Please don't do this. This should be the ideal of our affection for Krishna. We, the, the finite, should take this attitude towards the infinite. At any time, he may only give a little attention to us, but we should be all attentive towards him. And there is no alternative. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu advises that we have exclusive devotion towards Krishna. And we are insignificant. Our attitude must be of this type. So one time Srila Guru Maharaj gave an example when we're dealing with the infinite. For instance, if, if we are in a room and an ant is crawling on the floor and we lightly touch the ant, then that ant is aware of us, obviously. But the, the ant cannot cannot draw our attention, it can, in the sense, it cannot, when it is touched or not touched, then it, when it is touched, it can experience our presence, but otherwise, otherwise that ant can't do anything to perceive or force our presence or be able to know our presence. So it is like that. Mahaprabhu advises that we have exclusive devotion toward Krishna and we are insignificant. Our attitude must be of this type. So he can do as he likes and, and we can only hope to serve him and draw, his, draw upon his mercy. Therefore, Srila Srila Srinar Maharaj remarks that the negative can attract the positive. So only the negative being in the sense only by our... Uh, our sense of being fallen and and approaching Krishna, my dear Lord, uh, I have no position at all. I am a fallen soul, but you are the savior of the fallen soul, so I appeal to your mercy. But but otherwise, so that is a sense of humility, offering respect to others, tolerance. That can that sense we can call negativity. That we're not exerting our ego. That may as saying, you are the Lord of the fallen and I am the most fallen, or I am fallen soul, please, I am, dry, I am pleading for your mercy. That, in that way, by showing ourselves as not, as, as not asserting our ego, but actually showing ourselves as, as fallen servants of the Lord, then we may draw from the Lord some mercy. 
but here expresses that the Lord could show, show himself, show mercy in any way, by affection, by indifference, by even punishment. So, if we want such a great thing, then it is not an injustice that we should be treated hatefully. Our pre prospect, understanding, and adjustment must be that of self-sacrifice and self-forgetfulness. Just as when someone goes to fight for his country on the battlefield, there is no room for luxury or excessive, or excessive desires. I remember in this connection that when Gandhi formed his nonviolence army, one of the volunteer soldiers asked, please arrange tea for us. Gandhi told him, the water of the river may be supplied to you, but no tea. If you are ready for that, then come forward. If we want to connect ourselves with the Vrindavan Leela of Krishna, we can make no conditions. Then we shall understand the method recommended by Sriman Mahaprabhu, humility greater than that of a blade of grass, there should be no complaint from our side, not only in the external position of our present life, but even in eternal life. Any complaint from our side should be carefully eliminated, and we must fully accept the ways of the Lord. Krishna may accept us or reject us. We have to take that risk. Only then may we make progress. In some way or other, if we can enter the group of Krishna's servitors, we shall find that everyone has such a nature, and when they meet together, they will console each other in their respective groups. In different serving relationships, there are different sections of servitors of a similar nature, and they console each other with talk of Krishna, Krishna Kata. In Bhagavad Gita, Krishna says, Matschitta madgata prana bodhayanta parasparam katayantas chamam nityam Tushyanticha Ramanticha. My devotees mix together, talk about me, and exchange their thoughts that give consolation to their hearts. And they live as if this talk about me is their food. It gives them a high kind of pleasure. And they find that when they talk about me among themselves, they feel as if they are enjoying my presence. Tesham Evanu Kampartam Aham Agyana Jam Tamaha Nashayami Atma Bhava Sto Jnana Dipena Basvata. When sometimes the feeling of separation from me is very acute in my devotees, I suddenly appear before them and quench their thirst for my company. And this part is called Sweetness Within Pain. In this last in his in this last verse of his in this last verse of his Sikshastakam, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given another very fine and high type of solace. And this has been confirmed by Krishna Das Kaviraj Goswami, who has written, Hoye Visha Jwala Hoy Bitare Ananda Moy Krishna Primara Adbhuta Charita. Don't be afraid. Outwardly, you may feel a horrible pain of separation. But internally, you will feel an unparalleled type of rasa, the most pleasing feeling of peace, joy, or ecstasy. Externally, there may be pangs of separation, but internally, there is the greatest satisfaction. So this, we commented about this, that persons looking, looking at, at Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he lived, they may feel that, oh, this is... He's suffering so much pain and that pain of separation. So that is something hard to, hard to witness or, or read about or experience, to, that someone is feeling that kind of pain. But actually, the pain of separation, first of all, the pain of separation is tense, intense because Krishna Prem has been compared that uh, in terms of separation, it is there is the it is poisonous, like the like the poison of the cobra, but at the same time it is simultaneously like being bathed in nectar. So there is both elements, and nectar meaning meaning that amrita amrita which gives 
immortality. It is the greatest amrita, like a nectar in all senses of the word. So both is there. And how, if one is feeling in intense separation, because as this part is titled, there is union and separation. We are not approaching Krishna as a sahajis to try and enjoy him, but rather we are serving Krishna in the mood of separation, and that is what Mahaprabhu is showing in his Sikshastika on the eighth verse, expresses that intense separation from Krishna. Don't be afraid. Outwardly you may feel a horrible pain of separation, but internally you will feel an unparalleled type of rasa and the most pleasing feeling of peace, joy, or ecstasy. Externally there may be pangs of separation, but internally there is the greatest satisfaction. So now I've become a little bit old and I, I've seen much of the world pass by me and many things that I knew before, they have all changed. Many persons have come and many persons have gone. So, uh, and because I'm not so qualified, uh, I don't feel always the intensity of what is being mentioned here. But it is true that I do have some feeling of, of peace, joy, and even sometimes ecstasy from just, uh, and it is different than anything really that one can experience in, in this world. Sure, there, many things can be experienced and some of them seem, seem like very joyous and then we can think, oh, well, but it is not like the joy that one feels in, in, in devotion or in relationship with the service of Gurudev and the deities or, or the devotees. It is different than that. I, it's a very bad analogy, but I remember when I was young, I would go to the racetrack. And when I, before I go to the racetracks, sometimes Due to the influence of Maya or something, I would just feel sometimes I had actual visions because I was so involved in that consciousness. I had visions that led to knowing a winning horse. And I would go and I would bet on that winning horse and I would win. But when I wasn't experiencing those visions, then I tried to imagine or force myself to experience those visions and of course that only led to failure. So the intensity and joy and peacefulness of Krishna consciousness is very real and sometimes one can imagine or think that one is enjoying this world. So many things can give one enjoyment in this world but that always leads, that always leads to some termination, some feeling of, I would say, some feeling of failure on that plane because then one may experience even some happiness and then one may feel, but this is not real. It has come and it's gone. But it's not like the feeling of happiness that one feels in Krishna consciousness. That feeling comes and and grows and and can be can show itself by the sweet will of the Lord and it, it can surpass anything else. But that is hard to, hard for even myself to understand or communicate even to myself. But it is like the difference in that my setting between what is, what is real and what is imagined. Of course, nothing in the Mayak world is real, but I was, I was experienced how Maya can illusion one completely and in that illusion one may experience something that passes off as happiness but then one will try for that happiness again and again and people people are all search in this world they're all searching after happiness in one way or another but many times they don't experience happiness sometimes they do sometimes they don't 
But when they're looking for happiness. They're not looking for sadness. But sometimes sadness comes into their life without looking for it. Then why should they think that happiness will come into their life by looking for it? Maybe happiness also comes into one's life without being sought after, without being looked for. There will also be some happiness. Then why, why, why should one expand one's inner energy and attention on something that doesn't depend on one's looking for it or for one's endeavor to find it? Why not look for something that's more real that isn't so easily attained and is really worth looking for? And that is one's eternal happiness, one's eternal spiritual existence, one's service relationship with the spiritual master and Lord. That way, that one can make an endeavor and, and, and in that way one can advance on that most important plane rather than searching after something that you don't even necessarily can't control whether happiness or sadness will come into your life. And since, since it's all depending on, on bodily existence, we know that it's got to get worse. <laughs> because the nature of the body is that way. In this way, we are advised by the scriptures and our practical experience collaborates our faith in this subtle matter. So I'll just, we were hearing about Bhai Vishva Jvala Hoi Bhittare Ananda Moi Krishna Premara Adbhuta Charita. Don't be afraid. Outwardly, you may feel a horrible pain of separation, but internally, you will feel an unparalleled type of rasa, the most pleasing feeling of peace, joy, or ecstasy. Externally, there may be pangs of separation, but internally, there is the greatest satisfaction. So that is a point of extreme advancement. Cannot necessarily relate to that level of advancement, but we, we find that along with feelings of separation comes, as we heard, union. There may be peace, joy, or ecstasy may show itself. In this way, we are advised by the scriptures and our practical experience corroborates our faith in this subtle matter. The English poet Shelley has written, Our sincerest laughter with some pain is fraught. Our sweetest songs are those that tell of saddest thought. When we are reading an epic where there is cruel separation between the hero and the heroine, it is so sweet to us that although we shed tears, still we cannot leave the book. When we hear about the pangs of Sita Devi, how Ramachandra banishes her and leaves her uncared for in the forest, although she is with child, this is very painful. We shed tears, but still we read on. There is sweetness within pain. It is possible. Separation from Krishna is like that. The special characteristic of Krishna Prem is this. Externally, we may feel extreme pain, like lava, but internally, our, our heart is filled with some ex, extraordinary ecstatic joy. Guru Maharaj one time said, lava is close to, in English, the written form of lava is close to love. He, he said, wanted to know, is there any relation between love and love? Because the, this book is called the the golden volcano of divine love. And Srila Gurumar said that Mahaprabhu's expressions of the Sikshastika verses is like a volcano that's erupting and, and shedding lava, or love, that is in the form of these six, eight Sikshastika verses. So therefore, we have the title of this book, The Golden Volcano of Divine Love. Separation from Krishna is like that. The special characteristic of Krishna Prema is this. Externally, we feel extreme pain like lava, but internally, our heart is filled with some extraordinary ecstatic joy. This is what Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has given us. As much as we can catch the meaning of his instructions, we, we shall be prepared for that kind of life. This is the fair, fair to go to Vrindavan. And when we, inter, when we are introduced to so many 
others like us, then our joy knows no bound. When we meet others who have the same nature and mind as us, we get solace from them. We need not be afraid. In spite of all these things, we should think firmly that there is, that there is our home, and we should want to go back home, back to God. We are not foreigners there. Here we are foreigners. Every man treats me in any way that he likes. But Vrindavan is most hopeful and full of the highest prospect. It is the place of inner satisfaction. We aspire after that. We cannot but continue aspiring for a, a real home. What is real joy and ecstasy? We are not acquainted with that. This is our present trouble. Just as much... So here, it's, what is real joy and ecstasy? We are not acquainted with that. This is our present trouble. Yet as much as we progress in Krishna consciousness, we shall become conscious of a practical feeling of real joy and ecstasy, beauty and charm, and in this way we shall become more and more encouraged. Yamunacharya says, Yadavadi mamacheta krishna padara vinde nava nava rasa damani udyatam rantu masit Tad avadi bhatta nari sangames smaryamane bhavati mukha vikara shushtu nishtivanam cha. Before he came in, in touch with, with the Krishna love of Vrindavan, worldly pleasure was of much importance to me. But now, in any mundane, if any mundane taste comes in my memory, my face becomes disfigured, and I spit at the thought. So this is a very intense expression. What is this? Yamuna, Yamuna Charya says. Thank you. Before I came in touch with the Krishna love of Vrindavan, worldly pain was of much importance to, pardon me, before I came in, in touch with the Krishna love of Vrindavan, worldly pleasure was of much importance to me. But now if any mundane taste comes in my memory, my face becomes disfigured and I spit at the thought. So if we get a slight taste of that ecstasy, then at once we come to the conclusion that there can be no comparison between that and any peace or pleasure here in this mundane world. At the same time, once we are settled in that atmosphere, no pain can disturb or affect us in, in any way. Very nice. There is another side also. Although we are advised to be prepared for painful separation, the fact is not so cruel in reality. Krishna says, My te teshu chapiyaham. I am always with my devotees. Wherever there is an exclusive devotee, Krishna is there like his shadow, always invisibly moving after him. This is the Lord's nature. Ham bhakta paradino e asva tantra Eva Dvijata, Aham Bhakta Paradino, Yavan Tantra Eva Dvija, Sadubir Vrashta Ridayo, Maktar Bhakta Janapriya. I have to say that better. Aham Bhakta Paradino, Yavan Tantra Eva Dvija, Sadubir Vrashta Ridayo, Bhaktar Bhakta Janapriya. The Lord tells Durvasa, I am the slave of my devotees. I have no freedom apart from their will. Because they are completely pure and devoted to me, my heart is controlled by them, and I reside always in their hearts. I am dependent not only on my devotees, but even on the servants of my devotees. Even the servants of my devotees are dear to me. So the Lord tells Durvasa, I am the slave of my devotees. I have no freedom apart from their will. Because they are completely pure and devoted to me, my heart is controlled by them, and I reside always in their hearts. I am dependent not only on my devotees, but even on the servants of my devotees. Even the servants of my devotees are dear to me. And Srila, Srila Sridhar Maharaj explains that, that many advanced devotees to the Lord 
they won't take any favor from him. They don't want it. They don't want to be served by the Lord. They only want to serve the Lord. So Krishna has some difficulty in doing anything for them because they don't want to take service from the Lord. But if someone comes and offers service to the devotee who Krishna wants to serve and who won't take service from Krishna, then the Lord is very satisfied with that devotee. And he... So I am dependent not only on my devotees, but even on the servants of my devotees. Even the servants of my devotees are dear to me. And Krishna is not a sweet ball. We must be prepared for any unfavorable circumstances, but we must not be discouraged. Krishna is most affectionate. His care towards us is most acute and sincere. His affection towards us has no rival. Still, Sriman Mahaprabhu has given us a warning in this verse. You are coming to search after Krishna. Krishna is not a sweet ball from the market that you can purchase and finish so easily. You are trying to attain the highest of the high. So you must be prepared for anything. At the same time, the devotees will come to us saying, have no fear. We are all like you. Let us all walk together in a straight line. Don't be afraid. We are here. We are told that Krishna's devotees are even more sympathetic to us than Krishna himself. The solace of our life and our fortune is his devotees. And Krishna says, Madbhaktanam chaye bhakta. One who is a servant of my servant is my real servant. Sadhu Sangha, the association of saints, is the most important and valuable thing for us. To make our advancement and progress towards the infinite, our association is our guide. It is all important. We must stick to this conclusion. Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Koi. Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi. The conclusion has been given in the scriptures that all perfection can be attained by the help of the saints. Good association is our greatest wealth in reaching the supreme goal. So this Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Koi. Lava Matra, Sadhu Sangha. Sarva City Hoy. Even by one moment's association, one can get all perfection. So one may think, how can that happen just by a moment's association with a saint? Now, Sukriti may be so great, may so, be so great, just like as we can see by the recent conflagrations, forest fires that were going through three states. You know, if, if fire or a spark falls upon water, it's extinguished. If it falls on moist grass, it's extinguished. But if a spark falls on very dry grass, it's like spontaneous combustion. From that small spark, even produced by spark from lightning or some, it can produce devastating fire but that is if it falls on condition on grass which has a condition that it's so dry it will immediately burn and once that fire starts it doesn't matter if trees or grass are moist the fire is so intense it will burn everything so sadhu sangha the association of a saint by just a drop of sukriti one that can, that can give one all perfection, but the intensity. Now, one thing I always feel about our, our center here in Sokal, first we have the beautiful deities of Shishi, Guru, Garanga, Gandharvika, Giridhari. And, and I have been given some responsibility for taking care of this temple by, by Srila Govinda Marsh. But really what is also of great importance here is that in the temple and through the temple, one can get the association of the devotees. And that is why we're all here and that is what is so important to us, the association of other devotees. And through that associ association, through that mutual meeting and discussing of Krishna Kata, we can get so much benefit. And that Srila Srinar Mars has talked about here.
So now Puri Maharaj has come and she she put Bhakti Bandava Puri Maharaj and he will lead us in singing Hari Hari Haraya. Puri. Yeah, but Puri Maharaj came in the temple and he is t chanting Japa. How wonderful is that? Very nice. <laughs> Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama Hari Haraya Nama Krishna Jadavaya Nama Jadavaya Madavaya Keshavaya Nama Gopa Govinda Ram, Shimadu Sudana. Giri Dari Gopinata, Madana Moana. Giri Dari Gopinata, Madana Moana. Giri Dari Gopinata, Madana Gana Nara Shiva Sadi Gora Bhakta Brinda Jai Rupa Sanatan Bhakta Raghunatha Shri Jiva Gopala Bhakta Dasa Raghunatha Ajai go sai kori charana bandan Jai te vignana shavi sapura Ajai go sai jai we tara dan Dasavara Pada Renu Mora Pancha Gra Dadira Charana Sevi Bhakta Sani Bhakta Sani Bhakta Hai go sai brande brande ko la ba Radha Krishna nitali la khori la praka Anande bolo hari bhaja brindavan Guru Vaishnava Pare Majai Aman Shri Guru Vaishnava Pad Padma Koriya Nam Sankirtana Kohe Narasamada Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. 
Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Nita Gora Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo, Hare Bo. Jai Gora Ribo, 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 Ribo. Jai Saparikara Shishi Guru Goranga Gandharvika Giridari Juki Jai. Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramansa Paravajaka Chariasta Tarasara Shishi Mad. Srila Bhakti Sundar Govinda Dev Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Paramansa Paravajaka Charya Asta Tara Sata Shri Shri Maharaj Srila Bhakti Rakak Sri Radev Gosai Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Bhagavan Srila Bhakti Sunanta Saraswati Gosai Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Gaur Ki Shor Das Baba Ji Maharaj Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Satchi Dananda Bhakti Vinod Thakur Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Vaishnava Sarva Bhoma Srila Jagannath Das Baba Ji Maharaj Ki Jai Rupa Nuka Guru Bhargha Ki Jai Namachari Srila Haridas Sakur Ki Jai Sri Rupa Sanatana Bhatta Raghunath Sri Jiva Gopal Bhatta Dasha Raghunath Shad Goswami Prabhu Ki Jai Premzi Go Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Kadan Harshi Vasudhi Sri Gaurabhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Vishvavarinya Srila Bhakti Vedanta Swami Maharaj Prabhupada Ki Jai Jai Om Vishnu Pad Srila Bhakti Nirmal Acharya Maharaj Ki Jai Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Madhacharya Vrinda Ki Jai Ananta Koti Vaishna Vrinda Ki Jai Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Mat Ki Jai Sokel Sri Chaitanya Saraswat Sevashram Ki Jai Shishi Radha Krishna Go Gopi Govinda and Sham Kana Radha Kunda Kalindi Yamuna Ju Ki Jai Sama Veda Bhakta Vrinda Ki Jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan Ki Jai Shri Pad Bhakti Bandava Puri Maharaj Ki Jai All the assembled devotees Ki Jai Shri Divya Shakti Didi Ki Jai Gaur Premanande Hari Hari Bhava Shri Bhavati Bhavan Janardha Maharaj Ki Jai